started with contesting? Yes. Uh -huh. uh, Norman Vincent Peale had the book called The Power of Positive Thinking. And I had picked it up, read it, and there were two things that really enticed me to research further, and that was when he said, you can have anything you want, provided you know what it is, see yourself as already having it. And those were three things that intrigued me. And uh, I was, you know, just a little happy homemaker, no education, high school education, period. And the mother of three and sitting home and needing a lot of little creature comfort things, you know. And so I thought, well, that sounds exciting. So that night, uh, my husband got in and I said, I read this book and I said, what would you like? And he was reading the Dallas Morning News. And uh, he said, well, looky here, Coca-Cola has a contest. And uh, you can win an outboard motor. All you have to do is write 25 words while you take Coca-Cola on outings. And I said, and, uh, and then outboard motor. And then he went on and finished reading his paper. Well, I went into the bedroom and he's won in an outboard motor. So I sit there and I thought, Coca-Cola on outings, a pad. And I thought, I don't, we don't even drink Cokes. That's going to be a tough one. But I saw him sitting in a boat with his motor, enjoying himself. And so I wrote, uh, oh, he liked to go fishing by himself on weekends because he had a, a very serious job. And he was always stretched out and the kids were too young to take him fishing at that point. And so he'd go out for the afternoon. Okay, so now I'm sitting there and I see him in this boat and I write, I'm a lone wolf fisherman. Cokes are my silent partners. They contribute no yakety yak, only enjoyment when called upon. 25 words, put it in an envelope, mailed it off, and actually said to him, I wonder how long it's going to take him to let us know we won. Now, that's positive thinking. I didn't know any better. I just knew uh, he's got to, I wrote that story, right? that incident, he's got to win it. Two weeks later, the representative from Coca-Cola called and said, uh, Mr. Hadsel, you won your outboard motor. I thought, oh, that's nice. Now, what would we like to win? See, now what would we like to win? And my daughter said, well, I'd like a swim bicycle. And I said, and you want what color? You know, I thought, well, everybody should do this because uh, selected, you know, uh, here it is. See yourself as having it. So we had her sitting on a bicycle. And it was, uh, now, at that point in time, there were many, many opportunities for contests. And most of them, see, a contest is when you have to complete something in 25 words or less, name something, write an essay. A sweepstake is when they just put your name in the pot and they draw from one million entries, they draw your name. Uh, I didn't think of that as competition. I always thought the only competition you ever have is with yourself. And that's when you doubt yourself. So now my daughter, uh, we had the name of Pony. And it got to be, now this was a fun thing. And my son, I mean, we didn't look for big things. Roller skates, you know, uh, bicycles, and uh, things that were, uh, that children wanted. Um, Zuboo boxes, you know, for music and stuff. And so we started, uh, he, we sit, would sit at night, and I says, oh, we're gonna get Pamela her, bis uh, her bicycle and we have to name a pony. How are we going to name a pony? And uh, I show him a picture of a pony, and uh, they said, well, he's brown. And I said, yeah, he's brown. And what else? And uh, what else does he do? Well, uh, I said, does he prance? And well, then we call it Prance Charming. Prance Charming. And you get on a pony. What else? 
He bucks. He bucked too. Prance charming. And these were what we call coined words. And that's what we send in. I don't know which entry won, but she had her swing bicycle. Okay? So we then we got all the little stuff. Now I want linoleum for the floor, and I get linoleum. Then I want something else, and I get it. Now I'm thinking bigger. Now I want to win trips. And my son, my younger son said, I want, let's go to a dude ranch. Do you know we won this trip to a dude ranch and stupid me. Uh, this was in Arizona, and that's when I w was afraid of flying. And uh, they, I won the prize, they're gonna fly, and I said, I don't fly, can we drive down? And then I was, I was, I didn't get the prize because you had to follow their rules. <laughs> and so that, he was very, very ticked about that. You have to learn to fly, you have to learn to fly. Oh, now, the next thing I wanted, the children wanted to go to Disneyland. And that meant flying too. And I thought, well, I'll just brave it out. Really and truly, I was stupid on that area, but at that time I didn't know better. And so we get to um, one this trip to Disneyland, we all get there. And it was a fabulous, fabulous trip. And later on, uh, we, we did win a trip to the Dude Ranch, and I did go to, we did go to the Dude Ranch, and then we went a trip to the World's Fair, did go to the World's Fair, and one thing that was real funny, I was going to be 40 years old, and I had read that Paris is a city of light, love, and excitement. And I wanted to be, on the 1st of January, I said, what are we going to do this year? And Pat said, well, I said, I want to be in Paris, France, sitting at a sidewalk cafe, drinking wine on my 40th birthday. And I started to enter contests, only contests that were offering trips. And there were many of them. There's a lot of trips always in contesting. Always 25 words or less. And I always used the same 25 words. <laughs> I said, I'm a poop couple with three kiddos and I'd like to go to Paris, France to recapture the rapture of springtime ecstasy in my fat, forty frustrated years. That's the only thing I wrote. Well, the first time, uh, one company uh, investigates, before you win a big prize, you're investigated, they call you or they come out, interview you, and they do that to find out if you are any way related to the sponsors, any way related, because contesting are really on the up and up. And if they wouldn't be, I mean, it wouldn't serve any purpose. So I had the interview and uh, everything went fine, but I only won third prize with a Hammond electric organ. And it didn't win that prize. And I said, well, why did they give me an electric organ? And you know, somebody said, to cultivate patience. <laughs> so I have this big electric Hammond organ, and here it is now, my birthday's the first of June, and here it is April already, and I still haven't had this trip now. We're gonna have to plan this trip, we're gonna be there uh, drinking wine. And my husband even said, well, we have enough money. We'll go. I said, no, I want to win this with a trip. Well, it seemed like the last minute. I send that entry off, and lo and behold, I got a phone call and said, Mr. Hatzel, I used his name and, when I, uh, and my name, uh, you want a trip to uh, Venice, Italy. And I thought, well, I don't want to, I've been to Venice, I want to go to Paris. And the man said, well, you can change, you're first class and you can change uh, whatever you want to do. And I, he said, when would you like the tickets? I said, like right now. And he had a messenger come and bring these tickets. And we got on the plane 
And to make a long story short, on my 40th birthday, I was at that sidewalk with my husband drinking wine. So we did this. This is something else I need to bring up because I thought this was, well, it, it was nice. My husband and I are sitting here one afternoon, and uh, I just got back from a trip, a long trip. And, uh, sometime he went with me and sometime he didn't. And he'd go with me first time and then the second time he got bored because I was always counseling people and then at night I was in my, and he knew everything. So, But anyway, we're sitting here, he said, let's do something off the, let's do something exciting. What do you want to do? I said, you know, I love, love New York. I said, and I noticed in the paper that they're having this um, uh, best little whorehouse in Texas. And I said, I would love to go and see that off-Broadway show. And he said, well, I'll tell you what, let's, uh, I'll, uh, let's have lunch and I'll start calling uh, the, the airlines and we'll see what we can do. He says, sounds like fun, doesn't it? We're eating lunch, and we come back here for coffee, and the phone rings. Uh, Mrs. Hadsel, I said, yes. He said, I'm Rich Little, you don't know him, but he was producing a show to tell the truth in New York. And he said, your name came up as a very, very good contestant. How would you like to come to New York? And be on my show. I said, I looked at Pat and I thought, God, is this for real? And I said, what is it, Tom? He said, well, it's to tell the truth and the show had just started. And uh, he said, uh, we'll pay all your expenses first class and what else do you want? And I said, could I have tickets to this off-Broadway show? Will success fall rock on? And uh, he said, no, what else? And I said, well, my husband uh, wanted to come. Well, okay, we'll do a trip. We'll give your husband a ticket also. And what else? I mean, you know, when they want you, they want you. And he said, everything that we advertise, you will also get. Electric blankets, mix, whatever they were advertising. I said, when do you want me? Uh, when do you want me? He said, well, you can come this week or next week. And I said, well, let's see. And my husband said, this week, this week. <laughs> so I said, how about this week? Well, we'll have your tickets for you uh, by courier uh, tomorrow morning. So we went to, we did to New York, had this hotel, saw this Broadway play, was there three days. All ex They usually pay all expenses, and they give you a voucher if you want a cab to go wherever you want to, eat wherever you want to and entertain you. Really, it's nice to be on these talk shows. Well, that's, we had our little, uh, our little thing again. So, what is it, I mean, you know, there were many, many instances where I would uh, hear of something. Uh, the thing, I'm digressing, I'm sorry, because you're interested in being a winner. And all of you out there are winners, you know that. And you can have anything you want provided you know what it is, see yourself as having it, and if there's a delay in results, uh, don't be disappointed. Maybe you need to cultivate a little more patience. That's all it is, and it's yours. And you say, but the competition is so fierce, so fierce. And I says, everything is competition. How long, I mean, eventually, if you stay with something, long enough and strong enough, it's energy. And it's got to come to you. That's the law of attraction. It's out there for anybody. I never looked at it as competition. I remember uh, when after I had the publicity and had won that house and lost Colinas and had won all the cars and whatever I needed or wanted, uh, this was very interesting because that night we went to dance and we're dancing, and uh, right at the, as you came in, you signed in, and they had this fishbowl, put your name in at the end of the night. Uh, they had fruitcakes, because it was Christmas time, and uh, they had this big boom box. 
And my daughter had been wanting this huge boombox that had all these acoustics and things out. And I looked at it and I said, oh, there's Pamela's Christmas present. Well, the woman that was um, uh, taking the tickets, her overheard me. And uh, she laughed and she said, well, Mrs. Hadsold's here. So really and truly, you, it's stupid to put your name in the Hadsold's won the boombox already. All right, what did I do? They were giving me their energy. Everybody in that room gave me energy because they knew now we'd won this house. And we're dancing, and this man said, I guess she's got, and Pat said, she's got the boom box. And we're, they're making a joke of it, a joke. And they don't know that I didn't take their energy. They gave it to me. And that night, when his boss, now it's time to, ta to have the drawing, and here's that fishbowl full of, of names. And uh, my, the boss said, I'm not going to have anything to do with this. Somebody come up and draw a name. And a woman came up and she said, I'll get a different name. And she whisked around and whisked around and pulled a name. And it was my name. Yeah. Okay, this is energy. This is energy. This is what they do. And yes, you can get energy from someone else. If they're negative. I mean, why not? You mentioned the house. Can you tell us more about how you won the house? Yes, yes, yes. I came back after my trip. And in Dallas, we have a group of women that get together, and we call them the contest. We call them the range riders. And uh, when we got there, uh, we would swap entry blanks. We would stand up and say, what well, we won this month. We won this and this and this and this. One month, I won a prize every day. 30 prizes, one prize every day. Some of them would win four or five of them. And we had a lot of fun, and they were very supportive. So the night I got there, uh, the woman, one of the women said, Oh, you won the world's, uh, you went to uh, New York on your way to Paris. Did you stop at the World's Fair? And I said, Yeah, my son won a trip to the World's Fair. So he was with us. And then after the trip, uh, we were at the World's Fair, he went back home on a plane, and uh, someone met him, and so forth. And we went on to Paris. And she said, while you were there, did you see that Micah house? She said, that's, a, uh, that's an entire United States uh, contest. And Formica is having a new product that they're sponsoring, and they're going to build a house someplace in the United States. And all you have to do throughout the United States, the builders were you building their houses, but they were using this molding that Formica was very, very proud of using. So anybody throughout the United States, you had to visit one of the homes that had these entry blanks that were using Formica. Well, in my area, it was Garland, the only place that was had this thing. And she said, well, you could end. I said, no, I didn't know about it. I didn't know about it. Well, it's in Garland, and it's closing next week. And so on the way home, uh, driving home, because Dallas is uh, 27 miles from Irving, rather, all I could think about was, God, I'd like to win a new house. That's perfect. Yeah, I think I'll win that house. So the next day, it's drizzling. And one of my, uh, two of my friends that, uh, that were in this contest club with me live in Irving. So I called one of them, and I said, Let's go over and see that Formica house and enter. And she said, oh, she said, you know, they've already picked the entries. It's in New York, and they've already picked the entries. And she said, no. And the other one was having her rug shampoo. She couldn't go. And I tried. I said, I'll even buy you a pizza on the way. Let's go. And nobody would go with me. It's starting to drizzle. Rain, and I... Something, I swear, something pulled, actually pulled me out. The next thing I knew, I'm in the car driving 53 miles to go to that Formica house. And when I got there, I sat in one of the chairs and I looked 
at everything around there. And I'm already deciding that I want Spanish furniture. <laughs> I'm already building the inside of the house. And there wasn't anybody there except the woman that sat, you know, at the open house. I registered my name and I registered Pat's name. And I took an entry blank home. And that night, I'm reading the entry blank and it said, you must have visited the home. And I said, oh my God. I, sent, I put in Pat's name and Pat might win this. Do you know that Saturday morning Pat got up and I said, we're getting in the car, you're driving to Garland and you're going to look at that house. So when they call you, you can say you visited that. He did, he did. <laughs> he got to work. He believed what I said. We drove all that way so he could look at that house. And that was it. It was a done deal. Now we come home and he draws the plans for the house. And he said, tells the kids, uh, Mama's going to win us this big house. <laughs> Where do we want it? We're out looking for lots. We've got the plan here so when they come we can be ready. And then uh, that it was a month. Now the contest closed that weekend. It was a month later when uh, somebody on the phone called uh, Pat. I'm, I'm in Dallas, and they called Pat, and they asked Pat, uh, "Is Mrs. Hansel there?" "No, she's at a meeting." Uh, "Your husband?" He said, "Yes." He said, "Did she enter that? I mean, did she go to that for Michael home?" And Pat said. Oh, we were both there. I am so impressed with that laminated formica. We were so impressed. And he said the right thing. And that was it. And he said, uh, well, he said, we're just checking uh, everybody to see if uh, they actually did go and there's nothing here. Thank you, Mr. Hadson, for your time. That was all he said. All he, oh, he asked him. Uh, are you related uh, to anybody at the house, number one? Number two, any relations that work for, for Mike? Those were questions. So they had, he was on the phone five minutes answering all this. And he, was, he knew that because we knew when we got a big prize, we'd have to have an investigation, we call it. And so um, I came home that night, and he was ecstatic. Well, we went our house, and all we did was I wonder how long it's going to take them to let us know we won. And that's all I told the kids. And so it was about another month later. Morning I woke up and I said, uh, the kids were at breakfast, the two boys were still there, and my daughter was in college, and I said, uh, well, listen, they're going to let us know we won this house. For God's sake, act surprised. And they went off to school. And my husband said, are you sure they're coming? I said, yeah. And he was, I said, just stay in bed. And I says, pretend, uh, just, uh, we're just going to wait for them. Well, at 2 o'clock, and now it's 1 o'clock, and, and, and I went to the bakery to get some bakery. And I'm getting ready to put the coffee pot on when they come. And nothing happens. And about 2.30, I get this phone call. And they say, um, uh, Miss, Mrs. Hadzel, uh, when does your husband get off work? And I said, well, he's here now. Uh, oh, he, he, they were waiting for him to get off work so they could tell us together. I said, well, he's here. Uh, what is?" And I said, he just took the day off. Well, then we're coming right out. We're representatives, vice president of uh, Formica and our um, PR man. Uh, where we want to come out and tell you something very, very interesting for you. And I thought, yeah, yeah. You know? <laughs> so, and then I, of course, reminded Pat to act surprised, you know. They came in the door. <laughs> I did, I acted surprised. Oh my God, oh no, not me, oh no, no. And I see, I told Pat, don't show him the plans. So we're talking and he said, well, where do you want it? And I said, 
well, there's a new area, <laughs> you know, just, and uh, I said, and we have the plans. And uh, the guy looked at me and I said, well, we were planning. We were planning on building a house, but we didn't tell them that they were going to pay for it, you know. And so uh, we had all the plans there, and he couldn't believe it, you know. And I said, yeah, we, we, we had plans of enlarging this place. And that's how it came about. And from that period on, they hired an interior decorator. Uh, they hired so many people because it was publicity for their Formica. Uh, they would call me, they send me flowers. Uh, one weekend, he'd always call and say, are you happy? Are you happy? Uh, because at that time, the National Enquirer, which is at Reg Magazine, called and said, if there's any negative things, because this is the first time a house had ever been given, if there's any negative things, tell us, and we'll pay you for the negative. And I says, get it real and hung up. And I had that offer two or three times, and they were aware that they were looking for negative things. And I, I, there weren't any negative. But he'd call up and say, are you happy? Is there anything we can do? And every time they came, they wind us and dined us at the best, best hotels. And so one day he called, and he said, what's your favorite place? And they were building, and he kept coming and visiting, bringing me candy, flowers, and so forth. And I said, God, would I like to go to New York? Okay, we'll, put it, we'll send you to New York. And they brought us first class tickets. My husband and I went to New York. And we had, there were, at that time, the play was on Broadway, Will Success Spoil Rock Hunter? That was the play I wanted to see. And they sent me to New York. And while I was in New York, I did a lot of publicity with uh, one of the magazines, uh, the Good Housekeeping magazine. And they interviewed me and so forth. And then they had the house open for a month where they could, uh, people came in and uh, I was just a hostess. And they had people there that took care clean the house and so forth, and then it was turned over to us officially. Gold keys. We had a gold key. My husband and I were given a gold key, and uh, then he asked, listen, that's a big, at that time, that period, in the 50s, 60s rather, uh, income tax was a big challenge if you want a lump sum, and you had to pay it right away. And he said, if income tax is a problem, we'll take care of it. You know, I mean, they couldn't do enough. They couldn't do enough. That was a fabulous.